Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. My name is Devendra. I'm uh, from Thinking Machines Lab. And today, um, I'm going to be talking about our first product. Um, it's called Tinker. Uh, we launched it uh, just over a month ago now. Um, so I probably don't need to um, tell you a lot about uh, fine-tuning, the importance of fine-tuning LLMs. Like, everybody wants to train their own models these days. Um, but different sorts of applications, customization with your own data, your own products, and so on. Um, and so right now, there are two options of fine-tuning LLMs uh, on two extremes. One is bring your own GPUs, write your own code, do everything, manage everything on your own. And the other extreme is a black box API um, where you go and upload a data set and click a button. Um, so what do you have to do when you uh, bring your own GPUs? Um, you, of course, have to go and rent some GPUs. You have to set up CUDA and some deep learning library like PyTorch or JAX. You have to uh, set up some uh, fine tuning library like Unsloth or, or Hugging Face or Whirl. Um, and uh, figure out what combination of CUDA, PyTorch, Hugging Face versions are compatible with each other. And, you know, if, even if you get all this to work and you want to like now train a larger model, you need to figure out, okay, how many GPUs do I need to use? Uh, what kind of parallelisms to use, like data parallel, model parallel, context parallel, expert parallel? Uh, what is the longest sequence length I can fit in the GPU memory? When do I use gradient chuck point? And all these like little list of things that you have to figure out on your own. And what this does is basically, um, you know, it takes maybe hours or sometimes days to set this up and might still be suboptimal, like the performance you get out of it. Um, on the other hand, you have like these black box API options where you go to a website, you upload a data set, click a button to train. The problem is that this is very hard to debug. If it doesn't work, you don't know why it doesn't work. It's uh, the, the main problem, in my opinion, is that it's not interactive. You're not like, um, you, you can't see the, the loss and the gradient norms. Um, go down, and um, guys, what am I matching? Um, next one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is good. Awesome. Um, and then it also has uh, a lack of flexibility. Um, you can't specify custom RL environments. Um, you have to kind of like condense your data into uh, a JSONL file and then just upload that. You cannot specify custom loss functions. You can't run tool calls during training, so you cannot uh, you know, hook it up with another environment uh, uh, for, for reinforcement learning. And um, uh, for some products, you cannot download the model weights after fine tuning. And like a lot of people want to download their own weights, like and uh, run their own inference or like run it on device and so on. Um, so what we are trying to do with Tinker is basically find this sweet spot in the middle where you maintain the interactivity and flexibility of training on your own GPUs while abstracting away um, the complexity of distributed training. So what is Tinker? Tinker is basically a training API. It um, is designed um, to have these atomic functions, uh, like forward, backward, optim step, optim step, sample, save load, uh, state, and weights. And, and the key idea behind this is that we wanted to have an interface uh, which is very similar to what researchers are using, using within model training labs. And so what you can do is use these functions to design your own training recipe, your own data, your own environments, your own algorithms. And so. The way it works is like you focus on your training logic. You specify, here's my training data or my environment, and you can specify your algorithm, loss functions, hyperparameters. And the way you, you do all of this is like you write a simple Python script. And this runs on your laptop, on your CPU. You don't need to have GPUs to run the script. And you use these basic API calls like forward, backward, optim step, and so on to actually uh, run the training. And what Tinker does for you is it handles efficient distributed training of large models. Like we support about around 20 models right now, the Llama series, the Quen series, DeepSeq, and so on. And so basically, you, you can like train you know, a DeepSeq 
3.1, like 671 billion parameters model by just like writing a script on your laptop. And we also handle the reliability. Like, so any sort of hardware failures, um, any sort of uh, replays, we, we handle it transparently. So you don't have to worry about any of this. Of course, you don't have to worry about how many GPUs your training is going to need and what kind of parallelisms you need to use. So all the ML infra is abstracted away. And installing it is very simple. It's just a Python package. So now you don't have to set up NVIDIA drivers or CUDA or, or PyTorch or, or like the sampling libraries like VLLM or SGLang. And the training is uh, very simple. You first create a training client. So you just import the, import the Tinker Python package. You create a training client. Um, and then you use that training client to do forward, backward, and optimize your steps. So that whenever you do this, the model weights are being updated. And then you can create a sampling client, um, which allows you to like, save the weights uh, from your training client and create a new sampling client out of it. And uh, you can pass any prompt and get back responses using this. So uh, we have a, I have a small demo. Let's see if it works. Like Live demos are always risky. Um, but let's try it. OK, can you guys see this? So, this is a simple Python notebook running on my laptop. I have not installed any like special packages or anything. As you would say, like I'm going to import just this Tinker package. Um, and so you can um, basically uh, run this. Let me see. I'm connected to the internet. Let's see if this works. All good, all good, I think. Yeah, there we go. So um, um, it, it's good. Uh, I have the hot, hot spot, right? So um, you can like, just import Tinker and like, um, you know, get the um, server capabilities and, and find the list of supported models. So these are the models supported today. Um, so you can see all the DeepSeq, Meta, Llama series, uh, Quen series. I'm just going to run this ahead of time so that like we can see the results quickly. But um, um, and then like you can pick any model and you just specify the base model using a simple string, and you create a training client for that base model. Um, so here, I mean, uh, I'm using Quen 30B uh, MOE model, and then you can prepare prepare your data set. So again. Um, there's no special packages here. I'm just like literally creating a data like these seven examples. And this is an example of like what we call pig Latin. We just take the uh, first syllable of a word and put it in the end and uh, um, add an, an A to it, right? Like so um, this is just like seven data points. We can basically like write some code here to convert these, uh, this data set into tokens. And this is like what the process data set looks like. So you have like the input as um, the current token, our target as the next token, and weight as basically zero or one, specifying whether you want to use that token for training or not. So like all these zeros are part of the prompt, and all these ones are part of the response, right? Um, and then um, let me just zoom it, make sure it's uh, visible. So once you have your um, um, data set ready, you can just run the training using a simple for loop. Like, so this, basically what you're doing is like you have like this batch of seven examples, and we are doing like six steps of training um, on this. And so as you can see, the loss is going down with every step of training. And then once you have trained the model, you can just simply create a sampling client and specify your sampling parameters, and you can sample responses. So like um, here the prompt is coffee break, and this is like eight responses from the model. So like the model learned some sort of pig Latin in just like, uh, you know, six steps of training. Um, and this is all like, you know, trained right now in just like a few minutes, right? And, and the uh, really good thing about it is like you can start training like within seconds. So as, you, as soon as you create a training client, you can start training. So uh, if you have like tried fine tuning your own models on your own GPUs, you realize that it takes like several minutes, sometimes even half an hour to like start your training job. But here you can like do it literally in five seconds. 
and also uh, creating the sampling client from the training is also extremely fast. Within five seconds, you can, again, create a sampling client, so start sending in prompts. Great. Um, so uh, why would you want to use Tinker? So uh, it greatly improves your research speed. Um, we have designed Tinker to be uh, used for our own research as well. So a lot of researchers internally in thinking machines use Tinker uh, for running uh, various types of experiments. I, I uh, talk about one of the biggest benefits is the fast job startup. You can literally start jobs within seconds. You can just change models from 1B to 671B by just changing the base model string. This is extremely simple. Uh, if you, again, try to um, do this yourself, you realize that once you start training like large MOE models, you have to do like multi-node distributed training and that uh, it gets pretty complicated very quickly. Um, you can also do not just uh, SFT or like supervised fine tuning, but also reinforcement learning very easily because you can create sampling clients, uh, create rollouts using that sampling client and uh, get back the rollouts and uh, specify your own environment and your own reward function. You don't have to worry about accelerators in your training job. Um, for RL, you don't, don't need to worry about your trainer or sampler GPU pools. Uh, we also uh, do a lot of work to minimize the KL divergence between the two uh, 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 trainer and, and sampler uh, replicas. And then the failure recovery is built in. So if anything happens, like if there is an error or job crashes, we automatically reload your last checkpoint, automatically replay all the data that you have sent in. So from a user's perspective, there are no failures. Like basically, you just, even if there was a failure in the hardware in the back end, we manage it for you. We send, it, uh, send the queries to another replica and make sure um, that you get the correct results. And also one big benefit, you can download your model weights anytime. So anytime you create a checkpoint, you can also download it. So you don't have to use uh, the API once after you train the model for sampling. Uh, and the second biggest benefit is like it lowers your costs. So you just pay for what you use. We just charge you by tokens, like training token or sampling token. And Tinker handles the time sharing between jobs. And so if you think about it, this um, allows us to offer uh, really um, attractive prices uh, because we are handling time sharing between jobs automatically for you. So if you think about it, all the, uh, anytime you're running an RL job, um, once you do a, a, a step, optimize a step in your trainer pool, you have to uh, transfer this checkpoint to the sampler pool. And while the sampling is happening, your trainer pools are kind of running idle and you have to wait for the sampling to compete. And then, um, you know, generate the rollouts, compute the reward, and then do another step of training and then repeat this. And while your trainer is uh, doing the optimizer step, your samplers are uh, idle, right? So it's, uh, by, by doing time sharing between jobs, now what we can do is like, while one user is using the trainer pool, the other users can be using the sampler pool. We also have multi-tenancy where multiple users can be using the trainer and sampler pools at the same time. And so this allows us to uh, achieve efficiency um, much higher than like what you can get out of a single job. And that's why like we are able to offer these very attractive prizes. So if you look at um, these prizes, like so for DeepSeek, the cost of training is $3.38 per million tokens. And so if you were training for even like $10 million, it would, uh, 10 million tokens, it would be like $33. And if you think about it, like DeepSeek, typically you would require like 64 or 128 GPUs to just train one uh, copy of the model. And 128 GPUs would cost you like a few hundred dollars an hour um, just to like uh, set up the training itself. Um, the challenges of building Tinker, um, it's, um, there's a lot uh, that goes behind it. Uh, we optimize for, of course, the ease of use and performance. So we manage multiple model replicas for training and sampling. We manage all the user queues, uh, routing and scheduling between all the queries and the different models the users might be using. We implement multi-tenancy for efficiency. Multiple jobs from multiple users are running on the same replica. And we ensure reliability. We handle the failures. And we also make sure there are no noisy neighbors. Like whenever there is an error in one job, that doesn't impact any other job. 
And so really what happens behind the scene is that you need three different types of expertise in order to build a product like this. So you need the, the core infra, the tra traditional software engineering, distributed systems, routing, scheduling, managing queues. You need the um, ML infra to do the training itself, like multi-node training and sampling, and then managing all these models, figuring out what kind of parallelisms to use. And then you need the ML science, uh, which uh, is a big focus on Tinker is we uh, provide you with a lot of documentation, cookbooks, recipes, to make it really easy for people to uh, be able to use this product and like uh, train, create models. And um, of course, um, um, we use Ray um, in the backend for Tinker. Um, it is used for, uh, to, to easily spawn RL and trainer and, uh, and sampler GPU clusters to manage all these uh, different pools of GPUs for different models. And of course, you can also use Ray on the client side. So you can use that to manage multiple RL environments on your side, so you can run all these rollouts parallelly. Uh, and then we provide a, a full Tinker cookbook that includes realistic examples of fine-tuning you know, LLMs. Uh, it has examples, so we provide examples of basic uh, reinforcement learning and supervised learning loops, but also more uh, sophisticated recipes on math reasoning, preference learning, tool use, uh, multi-agent RL, um, multi-turn RL, RL, prompt distillation, and so on. And so you can check this out. Um, this is a open source GitHub repo. And we have more features coming um, up in the next few months. Um, Tinker was just launched one month ago, and like uh, currently it only supports LoRa or low rank fine tuning. And we are adding support for full fine tuning, and then also image input support. So now. Um, you can train the VLMs for robotics that uh, Jim talked about. Um, we have already seen a lot of community com contributions. So um, the Prime Intellect Environments Hub is integrated with Tinker. So any of the Prime Intellect Environments you can easily use with Tinker to train models. Uh, the Gem um, library for environments is integrated. Um, uh, there was probably a talk about SkyRL uh, today on the open source project to re-implement the Tinker API, so that means that you can like use Tinker even without uh, accessing our backend. Um, so you can host your own Tinker backend and like uh, uh, learn to use Tinker with that. And uh, we are also uh, um, opened up um, re research and teaching grants for Tinker. So if you are interested in using it for um, academic use cases, uh, you can apply it uh, for grants here. Thanks. Um, the, you can sign up for Tinker um, at this website, and um, for any questions, feel, please feel free to email me. Thank you.